Hi there, this is the GCC Forces Lesson 4. So this one is mass and weight. And the objectives for this are to be able to explain the difference between between mass and weight. Because obviously in real life, the terms are, are quite interchangeable. You know, you can use one or the other. And I want you to have a, a thorough understanding that gravitational field strength or acceleration changes depending where you are. So we'll discuss all this in this lesson. This is quite a bit of content and then there's some calculations um, towards the end. So we'll look at these in some more detail. So different scenarios. So top left, you know, bouncing quite, you know, quite clearly, you know, quite high with seems to be very little effort. Top right, GIF, you've got some astronauts on the space station, obviously flying in midair. So something different happening there. And then the bottom one's just on Earth. Someone talking about how much mass they have. So mass and weight, what are they? So if you want to pause to make notes after I've finished, that's fine. So mass is the, the amount of matter in an object and it's it's measured in kilograms. So you might say you might say to someone, Oh, how much do you weigh? And they might say, Oh, I weigh sixty kilograms. That's not their weight, that's just you know general day to day speak. It's kind of accepted, but you know, that's not mass. Mass is measured in kilograms. Uh, an important thing though, that the mass of an object is the same if it's, for example, on the moon uh, as it would be on Earth. So, so if you went to the moon, your mass would still be, you know, still be the same as what it is now. So, so my mass is maybe, you know, 82 kilograms. If I go to the moon, my mass is still 82 kilograms. Now, weight is the name of a force uh, that, you know, that gravity exerts on an object. So gravity causes, causes the force and we call it weight. Now, weight's measured in newtons. So... For example, on the Earth, my, my weight might be 810 newtons, for example. If I go to the moon, my mass will stay the same, but my weight will be one-sixth less. So you have to divide it by six, so it would be 810 divided by six. So a lot less, and that's because the moon's got a, a lower gravity, a lower gravity, essentially, or a lower gravitational field strength. Weight also makes objects accelerate. Yeah, accelerate downwards, obviously. And all objects accelerate at the same rate. That's a bit of a peculiar one to get your head around for the first time because a lot of people think that, you know, heavier objects will fall faster. Um, if you've got, for example, I don't know, if you've got a, a two kilogram mass and a 10 kilogram mass and that were the same shape and put them next to each other and drop them, they would hit the floor at the same time. And what people think about predominantly is, you know, maybe something like a feather or, you know, a bowling ball. So I've got an example on this one, so there's a, a a wonderful video done by the BBC with, with Brian Cox at, at a, a NASA testing centre, and they got a, a bowling ball and feathers and, and dropped them, and obviously, you know, the, the bowling ball lands first, so people think, well, yeah, bowling ball's heavier, it falls faster. When in reality, initially, if you look very carefully, the, the bowling ball and the feathers fall together, and then the feathers kind of reach reach their maximum speed, and then obviously come down at a, at a constant speed, whereas the ball will keep accelerating. And that's to do with, with air resistance, you know, and the shape of the feathers. So I'm going to give you another, another example. So what happened, I'll let you watch it. They, they, they were in a big vacuum, essentially. There were 30 tonnes of air inside it. And, and what they, you do, you pump it out over a series of hours. I think it's like four hours until there's basically two grams of air you know, uh, left in the container. The container is made of aluminium. I mean, it has a concrete shielding around it, and, and that stops the you know the air from outside basically crushing it. And what they found once you remove the air is that you get you actually see the true nature of gravity, and that you see you know the bowling ball and the feathers both accelerate together because as we, as I said earlier, you know gravity makes things accelerate at the same rate. Uh, clearly here so once we've removed the air we see the true nature of gravity and, and all objects are acted on the same so we found that interesting so the acceleration due to gravity or g as we call it so the acceleration due to gravity g varies with the planet moon or or star that you might be near um, it depends on the, the height of an object <laughs> above it so here's some examples now the surface gravity for the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, the meters per second squared is just a unit of acceleration. There's also another unit for gravity. So the, the 9.8 for the Earth could be, obviously, the 9.8 meters per second squared, as shown. 
or equivalently you could say 9.8 newtons per kilogram either or you just need you need to remember the units though so this one and this one now for the earth you need to remember that so you need to actually know the 9.8 won't be given to you in in a test but I I will discuss some of it so the moon the moon's obviously a lot smaller than the earth so you'd expect its its gravity to be weaker its gravitational field strength and and it is it's about 1.6 now Mars, Mars is smaller than the Earth, but, but bigger than the Moon. Uh, the the surface gravity uh, on on Mars is three point seven meters per second squared, or you know newtons per kilogram. Now Jupiter is the largest star in the solar system, so it makes the heaviest, so it makes sense it's got the most mass. So it makes sense that its gravity is the strongest, and it, and it is. It's twenty four meters per second squared. Now Pluto used to be a planet, got relegated to a to a dwarf planet. I believe there's five. Uh, the only I think Pluto and I can't remember the other names. I won't embarrass myself getting them wrong either. But if you want to Google them, NASA website's got some really good stuff on it. Pluto's really small though. It's uh, you know you're looking at about zero point seven uh, meters per second squared. So you know very very low mass compared to the others. And then the sun. The sun is obviously the largest object in the solar system, and it, it contains you know ninety nine point nine percent of the mass of the solar system. So. You know, it makes sense that its its gravitational field strength will be the largest, and it is at two hundred and seventy meters per second squared. So, if let's give you a bit of context, so so you might be thinking, oh, how do we calculate weight? You know, this is physics after all. There's probably an equation, and this is it. It's weight is mass times gravitational acceleration, or as we like to write it as a physicist, because we not like writing long words out, is W equals m times g. Weight equals mass times gravitational acceleration or gravitational field strength. So just so you can write this down, and you know, just so we're going to do some example questions. I'll show you how to how to use this if you've not seen anything like this before. So weight is measured in newtons because uh, it's a force. You know, mass is measured in kilograms, uh, and gravity, remember, is measured in meters per second squared or newtons per kilogram. So on the Earth's surface, a mass of one kilogram, we'll have a weight of 9.8 newtons. So let's have a look at some questions. If you want to have a go at this, please do. I am going to show you how to do it anyway. But if you want to have a go at it, just pause and then you can check your answer. So it says, the question says, what is the weight of a pork which has a mass of 0 0.738 kilograms on Earth where G is given 9.8 newtons per kilogram or 9.8 meters per second squared? So what we should do is, hopefully I won't make this jump. Oh, there we go. I did anyway. So weight is what I do obviously is, is write my equation first of all. I advise you to do that every time. So W equals mg. Weight equals mass times gravity. Remember if two letters are next to each other, it just means that they're multiplied. So it wants the weight, so I don't I'll just write weight equals and then it's just a matter of putting the numbers in. So the mass is zero point seven three eight multiplied by the gravitational field strength on the Earth, which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared. So that should give you an answer of 7.2 newtons. The full answer is 7.2324, but there's no point in that. Two significant figures is fine. Hopefully that went okay. Let's have a look at the next one. So this one's a bit different. If you can have a go at it, please, by all means, if you, if you feel confident, you want to have a go, and I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. So I'll do that now. So it says, what is the mass of a book which has a weight of 5.73 newtons on Earth? Where, again, gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared. So the what we can, or what I would advise you do, is to write the equation out. And then depending on your math skills, you could re rearrange it straight away. Or we could put the numbers in. So the weight is 5.73. So I'll just write 5.73 equals the mass now the mass is what we're looking for so i'm just going to call that m times g which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram so now we've nearly got this done so we just need the mass so pretend you're in a maths lesson and your teachers ask you to find the uh, make m the subject so what we need to do is get rid of the the times 9.8 and the way to move something that you need to get rid of is to do the opposite so obviously the opposite of timesing by 9.8 is dividing by 9.8 and then it's just a matter of putting that in your calculator and that will give you the mass mass of the book. So the mass of that book, if you put it in your calculator, will be 0 0.58, 0 0.58 kilograms. Hopefully that's okay. So let's move on. 
So, 3rd of November, 1957, Soviet Union. So, this dog, Kaya, I believe it is, it was the first animal in space, and she had a mass of 5 kilograms. So, there's a few questions you want to do. So, first of all, in fact, I'll put these questions on, in case you want, if you want to have a go at them, just pause and do it, and then I'm going to take you through the answers anyway. So, calculate Kaya's weight while she was on the surface of the Earth before she got jettisoned off, you know, into space, into low low orbit. So, weight is obviously mass times gravitational field strength, so W equals M, to M times G. So, the mass is 5 kilograms, and we need to remember that the gravitational field strength on Earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And then we just need to multiply them together to give us a weight of 49 newtons. It says when in low orbit, the Earth's gravity dropped to a sixth of what it was on the surface. So, you know, looking at the equation to be equals mg, if we drop the gravitational field strength, we should, you know, drop the weight. So if it's a sixth less, so what we need to do is the, the 49 newtons that the dog initially was and divide it by six. Uh, and that will give us a new weight of 8.2 newtons. And that's the two significant figures. Now, the last one, if Lakaya went to the moon, what would her mass be? Exactly the same, you know, as we said earlier, mass is constant. You know, so if Lakaya goes to the moon, the mass will simply be, still be, 5 kilograms. Hopefully you found that okay, though that's been helpful. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll, I'll see you at the next video.